Of course, the scenes of violence on Capitol Hill stunned viewers around the world. It was a shocking development in one of the world's most stable democracies. Bloomberg's Tom Keene and Francine Lacqua spoke with Richard Haas, president of the Council on Foreign Relations, about the U.S.'s standing in the world and the future of the Republican Party. Let's take a listen. It's going to be a long, long road back, almost like a, a person's reputation. A country's reputation takes a long time to build and a very short time to undermine. We saw the undermining the other day. I think in the short run, you've got to hold people to account. That's where law enforcement, the judicial system comes in. You can't do things like this and get away with it scot-free. Then we've got to take a step back and look at the context that allowed this to, to grow up. That's everything from social media, a lack of civics education. We've got to look at the economic context, a lack of opportunity. I think there needs, a, there needs to be a profound soul searching and reckoning in American society. You, more than anyone I know in America, had to live through Northern Ireland of a violent time. We moved from the violence of Northern Ireland to a peace. What part did the judicial system play in that? And do you just assume we're going to see arrests and a judicial process that will help heal us? It's a really interesting parallel, Tom. What, what worked in Northern Ireland were two things. One was the rule of law. What the provisional IRA and other people had to learn is they could not shoot their way into power. British Army, police, what have you, essentially made it impossible for them to realize their political aims with violence. But secondly, and it was important, they had to be offered a real, legitimate, alternative political path. So for this country, we've got to be serious about law enforcement, serious about law and order. Those who break the law need to be held to account. But we need to make sure there are economic and political paths in this country for reform. Economic, I've already mentioned, politically, we really need to look at how we reform our political system also so moderates have a, a voice. Our primary system, our funding, our media all favor radicalization. Uh, Richard, good morning from London. Can the president really pardon himself? Look, it's, it's a gray area whether he can, he can self-pardon or, or not. Obviously, you know, if all the rumors are true, he's going to explore it. Uh, you know, it won't necessarily protect him from what happens then in New York State or other states. It also won't necessarily shield him from congressional investigations. It may or may not, depending on what the Supreme Court would rule, protect him from the consequences. But the investigations, I believe, will go ahead regardless. Is the romance now between Donald Trump and the Republican Party truly over? No. I think that's one of the real questions where, where the Republican Party goes. The fact that you still, the other night, after the events of January 6th, still had Republican congressmen and senators questioning without any evidence whatsoever the election results tell you that the Republican Party, or elements of it, to be more accurate, are afraid to tackle Donald Trump. They're worried about his power over cable over social media, his power in the very in the base of the Republican Party, which is what comes out in votes in, in primary. So I think the, the question is whether the Republican Party can expunge this radical element. If not, does, does it coexist? You essentially have two Republican parties. Do you, ultra, do you ultimately bring about a real conservative party? I think that, that has to play out. Richard Haas of the Council of Foreign Relations. And of course, we'll have more on the political fallout over the Capitol Hill attack in our next hour. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.